So herbicide drift, a very frustrating situation to be involved with. So I'm going to give a little bit of overview about drift and how you might be able to respond to it. So the problem that we have is herbicide movement off of the site of application. Oftentimes, this herbicide is used as an over-the-top spray on genetically modified crops that have been bred to be resistant to these herbicides, or a pre-plant burndown spray where folks are prepping in the spring and burning off any weeds that might be present in the field before planting. So there's a couple ways herbicide can move. One is what we call drift. So that's basically as the herbicide comes out of the sprayer, it moves across the landscape. So this is actually droplets from the sprayer moving across the landscape. Volatilization, this is when the pesticide residue on the crops turns into a vapor form. And particularly in atmospheric conversions, essentially the air that's closer to the soil surface is cooler. And so when that turns into a gaseous vapor, as opposed to going up into the atmosphere, it moves laterally across the landscape. Uh, runoff can happen where the herbicide basically moves across the soil surface and water from rainfall. Some of the common culprits are some of the broadleaf herbicides. 2,4-D and dicamba. This can happen from field crop application as well as from lawn and landscape application. So the best thing that you can do to prevent drift is talk with your neighbors. So having an open conversation with them about your concerns, the fact that you're growing plants that are sensitive to herbicides, that you have a lot of money invested in your landscape and your garden. It's also a good idea to talk with your lawn care company. Oftentimes broadleaf herbicides are applied to lawns and depending on you know, how much communication you have with your lawn care company, you might or might not know what they're putting down. If you're gonna use broadleaf herbicides, 2,4-D and dicamba are common in many lawn herbicides. Avoid spraying it in hot weather and best time to control perennial weeds with broadleaf herbicides is actually in the fall. You can use signage around the garden or around field borders. If you're doing application yourself, you can use a cone or a hooded sprayer. This picture really on the left isn't the greatest example. That cone should be closer to the ground to prevent any kind of drift. And in your own landscape, you know, there's a lot of options to avoid herbicide use altogether, which could include uh, mulches and hand weeding as well as other practices. For specialty crop growers, for folks that are growing for any kind of sale, there is a website called Driftwatch where uh, sensitive crop sites as well as apiaries can be registered. Basically, it's like a Google Maps program where you can draw around the site, making sure to exclude any structures. And there is a half acre minimum size that can be plotted using this software. Ideally, every pesticide applicator looks at this before they apply pesticides. It is not mandatory, however, so there might be folks that are not looking at it. Regardless of whether you're mapping, you can order signs from Driftwatch as well. So thinking about herbicide drift, Broadleaf herbicides like 2,4-D or dicamba, they cause a fairly characteristic upward curling or puckering of the leaves, which you can see in this middle photo. It can also cause elongation of stems and leaves. You can see in this picture on the right from a greenhouse I visited, very elongated leaf structure. The picture on the left shows you how elongated those stems can get. It looks like this plant was grown in the shade, but it was in full sun the whole time. You can see some of these little younger leaves are twisting as well. There's varying sensitivity, and we don't have a lot of great data on what plants are sensitive, what plants are somewhat sensitive, what plants are not sensitive. We do know that tomatoes are very sensitive. Dicamba drift, that's an over-the-top spray, uh, generally on soybeans, generally happens in the beginning of the summer. There is a cutoff date for application on agricultural fields for soybeans, as well as for cotton. But besides dicamba, 2,4-D as a burn down pre-plant could happen at any time of the year or as an over-the-top application on genetically resistant crops. Unfortunately, both of these herbicides can both drift physically, that lateral drift of the droplets, but they can also volatilize, turn into a gaseous form and move off site. Non-drift ways that herbicide can come into the garden is through contaminated compost and manure. 
So these herbicides are very persistent. They're sprayed on hay fields and pastures to control broadleaf weeds. But often the, the way this occurs is that that hay or that pasture is sprayed, it's baled, it's fed to an animal, it goes through the gut of the animal, into manure, through the composting process, into the garden, and then is uptaken by plants. Unfortunately, these can be very persistent, three or more years until they degrade in the soil. This produces very, very tightly curled leaves. There is a simple test you can use using green beans. We call that a bioassay, where basically you're planting some pots with some of the compost in it and some pots with just a potting mix. And you can see if there's any difference in the green beans between those two treatments. And if there is no difference, you can be pretty sure that there's not any kind of contamination issue. We do have a good publication that talks a little bit more about this and how to do this green bean test. Non-drift lookalikes. So physiological leaf roll. On the picture on the top right, you can see these leaves are, are puckered upwards or curled upwards, but this is not an herbicide issue. Um, this is caused by drought stress, could be caused by excessive winds during um, dry soil conditions, could be caused by excessive pruning when soil conditions are very dry. You'll probably notice it first in the older leaves before you notice it in the newer leaves. Um, thrips damage can also cause distorted leaves. You can see some tomato leaves on the left and some pepper leaves on the right that look kind of strange, but that's caused by thrip injury. That's a little bit more common in greenhouse situations, but at first glance, you might think that there's some kind of herbicide issue going on there. A couple other non-drift lookalikes, tobacco mosaic virus. This is a virus that's generally comes in on infected seeds, not something we see very often, but it does look pretty strange and you might think that that's an herbicide. The picture on the bottom is broad mite damage on peppers. So you notice the upward curling of the leaves, but these leaves will become hardened and thickened and more narrow. And you might also notice that blooms are aborting and that the overall plant growth is severely stunted. So if you think you have a drift event, um, you can contact your local extension office. We're happy to look at pictures talk to you about the situation. We're not a regulatory agency. It's definitely good to try to resolve with the neighbor first. Sometimes I've had situations where folks have been hit with herbicide. They talk to the neighbor and the neighbor says, okay, send me a bill for the damage that was caused. If an appropriate resolution can't be reached, you can contact the Missouri Department of Agriculture. If they deem that there's been a misapplication or a pesticide incident, Whoever applies that pesticide, assuming you can figure that out, uh, will receive a warning notice or possibly a fine. The only other option outside of that, it's important to note, the Missouri Department of Agriculture will not in any way facilitate compensation between you and the person that applied the herbicide. The only option outside of that would be to pursue civil court action, which obviously would involve lawyer fees. Some documentation that can be helpful to record the weather conditions when you think the drift's happening. You can draw field maps, take pictures of the damage, and record what plants are present, what plants were impacted. And also another thing that can be helpful is to keep purchase and sales invoices to show how much money was spent on that crop. If you do need to file an incident report with the Missouri Department of Agriculture, the form can be found on their website. You can see what it looks like on the bottom there. It's called a pesticide incident report. You must do this within 30 days of the incident. I was talking to the pesticide enforcement person at Missouri Department of Agriculture. He said that they're generally able to do a follow-up phone call and or site visit to a homeowner or to a grower within about 48 hours of that report being submitted. So here's the phone number. Missouri Department of Agriculture did let me know that they will collect plant samples if that's necessary to have those samples analyzed to determine if any herbicide is present. I do encourage folks, if you think you have an herbicide drift issue, reach out to us, report the incident to the Missouri Department of Agriculture. I know this is a frustrating situation for everyone that has to deal with it. I think the more that our regulators know this is happening, the more likely there might be some shift in policy regarding fines or other ways to deter this from happening.